हेलो स्टूडेंट्स कंटिन्यूइंग विद सुपर कंडक्टर्स फॉर बीटेक फर्स्ट ईयर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल स्टडी परसिस्टेंट करंट्स एंड टाइप वन एंड टाइप टू सुपर कंडक्टर्स दिस अगेन इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट हेडिंग फॉर योर एग्जाम प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल इन ऑर्डर टू अवेल एडिशनल बेनिफिट्स परसिस्टेंट करंट द वर्ड परसिस्टेंट मीन्स कॉन्स्टेंट दैट मीन्स दैट it is when you supply current to a of dc current of large magnitude is induced in the superconducting ring look at this diagram here in this superconducting ring a current has been induced then the current will persist in the ring even after we have removed the field this current is called persistent current and it has happened because of the diamagnetic behavior which is shown by superconductors so persistent current is persist means to exist for a longer time is one which flows in superconductors without any loss in its value for a very long time so this property of superconductors can be used in the preparation of superconducting magnets which will supply current for a very long time so superconductors since the resistance is zero the amount of current flowing through them will remain same and it will remain for a longer time they will not require any type of external potential difference or power supply so if a ring made of superconductor is placed in the magnetic field above its critical temperature now when the ring has been cooled below its critical temperature and if we remove the magnetic field current will immediately get induced in the ring due to the property of self inductance and from lenz law which states that induced emf is equal to rate of change of flux e is minus del phi by del t the direction of this induced current is such that it is opposing the very cause that produces it and since the ring is in superconducting state that is zero resistance the current in this ring will continue to flow and this is known as persistent current and such a current usually is impossible in normal electric devices but superconductors and some microscopic devices persistent currents are possible and they are basically observed due to quantum effect persistent currents are widely used in superconducting magnets what is josephson effect when two superconducting materials are joined with the help of a thin layer of insulating material between them then current starts to flow this is known as josephson effect and electronic circuits can be built from these junctions flux quantization quantizing means that it occurs in multiples you remember current is quantized or q charge is quantized q is equal to ne that means it is a multiple of electronic charge so integral multiples of charge on an electron in the very same manner magnetic flux lines which pass through a super conducting loop due to persistent current are quantized we call this property as flux quantization penetration depth that means it refers to the exponential decaying magnetic field at the interior of a superconductor and it is related to the density of superconducting electrons in the material mathematical expression is that if h not is the field at the surface x is the distance from the surface and lambda is a characteristic length which is known as london penetration depth then h is equal to h not into e to the power of minus x upon lambda that means exponential decay 
Now, type 1 and type 2 superconductors are the most important heading in this unit for a 10 mark question. They are most important. So, type 1 and type 2. Superconductors are basically divided into two categories depending upon the way in which transition from superconducting state to normal state proceeds when the applied field is exceeding the critical field. Superconductors are classified as type 1 and type 2. Type 1 are the simple or the soft ones and type 2 are the hard ones. Superconductors which are exhibiting complete Meissner effect or which never allow a magnetic flux density or line of magnetic induction to exist in its interior or they are perfectly diamagnetic are called type 1 or soft superconductors. As you can see, critical field, applied magnetic field, below it, it is in the superconducting state and above it, it is in the normal state. This has already been explained to you very clearly in the previous lectures. So type 1 materials are perfectly diamagnetic and they are poor carriers of electrical charge. Have a look at the type two superconductors. Now, this uh, their variation is showing that superconductors which are exhibiting incomplete Meissner effect or below this certain critical value, they are behaving like type one superconductors and they Above HC1, the critical value, the field has started to penetrate until you are reaching the state of HC2 or the higher magnetic field. So, in this partial region of penetration, mixed state occurs for type 2 superconductors, which are usually alloys. And mixed state or vortex state is formed here. Above HC2, the superconductivity vanishes and they return back to normal state. So partially they behave as type 1 superconductors. They show the property of mixed state. And above a certain state, they come back to their normal state. So a superconductor which is exhibiting incomplete Meissner effect or partial effect till the time they are behaving as type 1. That is till the time magnetic field is HC1. After that, they start behaving in the mixed state manner and are known as type 2 or hard. Below a certain critical value, they behave like type 1, showing complete diamagnetic or Meissner effect, above which they start behaving in a mixed manner and the state is known as mixed state or vortex state. Above critical field HC2, the magnetization vanishes completely and superconductor gets back to its normal state. The examples very famous are usually a combination alloys, etc. So quickly, type 1 are the soft superconductors, type 2 are the hard superconductors, type 1 show complete Meissner effect, they are completely diamagnetic, type 2 do not exhibit complete Meissner effect, type 1 have only one critical magnetic field, but type 2 have three critical, two critical magnetic fields. No mixed state exists in type 1 superconductors, but mixed state is present in type 2 superconductors. Examples of type 1 superconductors are lead, tin, mercury, etc. that is single elements. An example of type 2 superconductors are alloys or combinations like and neodymium NSN or neodymium zinc or NBTI, etc. Thank you.